Aloha champions and welcome back to our Monday social studies video. Here we are going to be exploring chapter 2 of unit 2 for social studies in which we're going to examine mountain animals. So a little biology in the study of life of the creatures that call mountains their home. Our big question that we want to answer for today's activity is how do animals survive in the mountains? What makes them adapt to this environment? Well, without further ado, let us begin and remember that at the end, you'll have five to 10 questions to answer on a Google form. Chapter two, mountain animals. An old tall tale sa says that mountain animals, such as goats, are born with their legs on one side of their bodies longer than the ones on the other side. The idea is that this would make it easier for them to walk along steep mountain slopes. If, say, you like prefer to walk up mountains, your left side would be a little shorter than your right side, and that way you can balance more easily. However, that's a tall tale and not the whole truth. So getting around their mobility. If you think about it though, there would be one big drawback to such an arrangement. The animal could only move in one direction. If it turned around so that its short legs were on the downhill side, then it would just tip over and tumble down the mountain. Animals such as mountain goats and sheep have bodies that make it easier for them to get around. For example, their hooves have sharp edges that help them grip the steep mountainside. Mountain goats are probably the most sure-footed of the mountained animals. Sure-footed means not likely to fall. Goats sometimes walk out onto a very narrow ledge, and when that ledge ends, the goat rise up on their back legs, turn around, and walk away. Here we have an example of one such mountain goat whose legs on its left side of the, its body and right side of its body are equally the same length. Here it's young you, the baby goat, is on its back legs and if it wanted to turn around it could easily pivot on those hooves to turn the other way. Okay, so here's some cool facts about mountain animals. The Rocky Mountains in Western North America are home to 67 different species of mammals, including wolverines, not the X-Men character, but the beast, and 270 different species of birds, including the three-toed woodpecker. The Himalaya Mountains, where we can find the tallest peak in the world, Mount Everest, is home to 300 different identified species of mammals, including the red panda. 977 identified species of birds, including the Himalayan griffin vulture, probably a big bird of prey that feasts on carrion or the deceased remains of other animals. 105 identified species of amphibians, like your frogs and toads, and 269 identified species of fish that call the Himalayans their home part of their biome. Between the years 2009 and 2014, scientists discovered more than 200 new species of plants and animals living in the eastern Himalayans. One new discovery is of a blue walking snakehead fish. These fish can breathe air and can survive on land for short periods of time. So very unique creatures call mountains home and it's uh, fascinating to scientists to always discover new types of animals and what makes them adapted to live only in this specific place. Okay, a few key vocabulary words we should draw our attention to is survive, to stay alive, and to hibernate, which is to go into a sleep-like state during winter and to live off of your body fat. Okay, so these are ways in which animals adapt to survive, to stay alive. Surviving the cold. Mountains can get very cold, especially in the winter. Mountain animals need a way to survive the cold weather. Animals can deal with that problem in four ways. So a deer can move down the mountain to where it is warmer and there where it is more shelter. So 
During the summers, they go to the cooler peaks, and during the winters, they move down the mountain to avoid the heavy snowfall. Like these goats, they can grow heavy coats to keep them warm. Like these gophers, they can find shelter underground or under the snow. They bury their way down, make themselves a nice little cave where it stays the same temperature all year long. Or, like our bears, they can hibernate and build up enough body fat that for three to four months out of the year, they can hibernate. Most large mountain animals spend the winter lower down the mountain. In the Rockies, we have elk and bighorn sheep that move farther down there. They find shelter from the cold and wind among trees and bushes. Mountain goats, on the other hand, stay high up. They have two layers of fur to keep them warm. One is soft, woolly undercoat. The other layer is a shaggy outer coat. In the spring and autumn, they shed large parts of these coverings. They end up looking rather untidy. The meadow vole, kind of related to this marmot or gophers, they stay high up in the mountains. A vole is a small animal similar to a mouse. The vole digs tunnels under the snow. It lives underground during the winter. The snow keeps the wind and cold away. Some animals, such as ground squirrels, survive by hibernating. They spend the summer and fall eating lots of food. The food is stored as fat in their bodies, and in the late fall, they go into their holes and they fall asleep. Slowly, their bodies cool off until they are at the same temperature as the hole where they are sleeping, which is about 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 7 degrees Celsius. Their heart beats and breathing slow down. Their bodies need less energy and can live off their stored body fat gallery of animals. Many different animals live in the mountains. The mountain lion is the largest wildcat in North America and terrifying to see if you ever see one in the woods. We have one or two that live around the summer camp I work at. Don't want to mess with them. The mountain lion is also known as the puma, the panther, the cougar, or the catamount, depending on what region of North America you come from. Once the mountain lion roamed all over North America, as more and more people moved into the lowlands and built towns and cities, the mountain lion was driven away. Unable to survive in the lowlands, the lions were forced to mostly live in the mountains. Here's an example of a majestic yet terrifying mountain lion. Guanacos live in the Andes and South America Guanacos are related to llamas. Guanacos are very shy as they graze. One member of the herd stands guard on higher ground. If they are in danger, the guard gives a signal and the herd will run away, causing a small stampede. Here we have a picture of an ibex, and the ibex has lived in the Alps, uh, located near Switzerland, Fra France, and Germany over in Europe and its image appears in cave drawings made thousands of years ago. Its horns can grow as long as three feet long. Its horns are so long it can scratch an itch on its rump with the tip of a horn. Handy, I guess, if you're an ibex. Mountain animals come in many sizes and shapes. The tiny wolf spider lives in the mountains of North America. The much bigger giant panda makes its home in the mountains of China. Many birds, such as eagles and condors, fly through the air above mountains all around the world. But some mountain animals are probably myths, or an idea or story that many people believe, but it's not necessarily true. Local people in the Himalayas tell stories of a huge ape-like creature that they call the Yeti, or we might call a Bigfoot, but no one has ever been able to prove that the Yeti or Bigfoot is real, okay? So hopefully you learned a little bit something about mountain animals, and hopefully as a scholar or a potential scientist or uh, social studies person, you are inquiring or developing more and more questions about these animals and how they live in the habitats of the mountains. 
So I want to thank you for your time. I hope you stay awesome. Remember to answer those five to 10 questions and I will talk to you real soon.